Hey everybody, today I'm out at the Black Canyon of the Gunnison in Colorado, and this is quite a spectacular national park. This area has some pretty intense and awesome geology. Um, so let's get started. This is a pretty complex area, so I'm gonna do my best to try to keep it really simple. Um, but again, there's a lot of geology here. So this area, as you can see, right, let me kind of pan over this way, big canyon, right? Very, very deep. Uh, this canyon is actually has some of the steepest cliffs that we see in North America as far as canyons go. It's only about nine miles wide if you look from edge to edge over there. So this is definitely very different uh, than the Grand Canyon, which I'll talk about that difference and how that forms in another video. But let's talk about specifically what we have here. So if you take a look, all of this rock that goes down, let me scan back over here because it's quite a beautiful wall. Um, all this rock over here, all that dark colored rock, is all different degrees of schist and gneiss, which are both metamorphic rocks. So these were rocks that were pre-existing, and most of these rocks started out as a shale or a siltstone, and that kind of material is deposited way out in the deep ocean. It was metamorphosed, so it was ex is exposed to high amounts of pressure, that's usually how we get these foliated kind of metamorphic rocks, and it turned into these gneisses and schists. Now, if you take a look over here, which this, let me get out of this view, because this is really amazing. You see all these big, beautiful pink bands that are going through here. This is an igneous intrusion. This is pegmatic granite. Um, so pegmatic is referring to the really large crystal size. So this is telling us that this material cooled really slowly uh, inside the earth. So I said, well, how the heck is all of this here? So first of all, this rock, not only is it metamorphic, right, has this really long history, this rock is about 1.7 billion years old. It's really old. This is the, some of the oldest rock that we see on North America. So this rock was once buried a long time ago. And in the Mesozoic, we have the building of the Cordillera, which is the mountains that go from California all the way into Denver. And it was all due to subduction, right, that's happening off the western coast, which is still happening today, just today up in the, the northwest. Uh, but we have subduction that's going on, and it's pushing island arcs and microcontinents and little aloxanous terrains into the coastline. It's colliding it and crunching it and building this area up. As we get to the end of the Mesozoic, which just for just to mention sake, I way oversimplified that because this is a very complicated topic, the building of these mountains. But as we get towards the end of the Mesozoic and the Cretaceous, we have what's called the Laramide Orogeny. In the Laramide, Laramide Orogeny, what we see is the angle of subduction, instead of being pretty steep, changes to shallow and it starts happening really fast. So it's pushing up all of this area in the interior of the United States, pushing up this area of Colorado. So we pushed up this area, right? So it's getting pushed up. We create all these fractures and faults along the sides. And then much later on in time, the area starts uplifting, right? Due to continued erosion, right? Taking material off and it's starting to uplift. And as it continues to uplift, igneous material that's locked inside is going to come out. It comes out through these fractures. So first of all, you can see all of this igneous material that's here, right? Is coming out uh, through those fractures, right? That are in the rock. Now, what made this canyon is obviously river erosion, right? That should be fairly obvious. As you can see, let me pan back over here. We've got the river that's down there. So what happened here is the San Juan Mountains, which are actually in that direction, uh, the San Juan Mountains became very volcanically active. At the same time, same material that we have that's making all of these igneous intrusions. As it became active, it laid down a huge, vast field of igneous material. Now, igneous material is really soft. Right? It's lots of ash and pyroclastic material. That material is really soft as comparison to this hard rock back here. So as the Gunnison River was kind of flowing down through it, it could erode through that volcanic material really, really quickly. And now that it's eroded through that volcanic material, it's kind of left a nice little divot for itself. And that river is not going to change course. It's stuck now. So now that river is stuck going through this really, really hard material. It's taken about two million years to form, let me pan back here, this canyon you see behind me, which is pretty incredible because that's actually really, uh, really fast. That's, that's pretty much like yesterday, this canyon formed in geologic terms. But this rock is really hard. So on average, from what I read up at the visitor center, on average, every year, only about a hair's width worth of rock is removed from this region. Right, so that should go to show you how thick and 
tough and durable this rock is. So this is quite an amazing place. We see all of all parts of the rock cycle that's here along with this insanely complicated geologic history and as you can see it leaves behind this absolutely stunning landscape.